Oh, right, all right, all right, guys. We've got Oliveira in the top right side of the map going up against Arena in the bottom left side. It's Kaizy Gaming Team Kill, actually, right? I believe they're both actually on Kaizy Gaming. And this was one of the most exciting, if not the most exciting series. Uh, well, specifically, I had one or two games that were, were some of the funnest games in the entire tournament, in my opinion, and most exciting. So stick around for what is going to be a banger. It's the quarterfinals of, of course, the World Championship. Reyna is here scouting right now for Proxy Barracks. So interesting. These guys must have practiced a fair bit. And I imagine Oliveira has actually proxied him before. So he's checking everywhere for that. Wow. Really respecting it. Little does he realize it's a command center first build for Oliveira into gas, barracks, and then second gas. This is a super quick tech build. Look at that. Hitting 100 gas even before the barracks is done. So Oliveira is going all economy, no defense. And it makes sense. You're playing a big map. Why not? Reyna also not only drone scouts, but he also builds four Zerglings. So Reyna is playing in the standard meta on this giant map. He's saying, cool, got to watch out for proxy racks. Already commits a lot to that. Now build four Lings ready for the Reaper. Already commits a lot to that. But there's no Reaper coming. So this could have been two more drones. This is a massive advantage to start the series for Oliveira in the opening. I say massive, I mean, as far as small opening advantages go. Reyna basically being down a few workers from where he could be, and Oliveira being untouched despite building very little defense. Just got one Reaper at home. He's going to go reactor behind that and dropping meals on the low ground nice and early. Reyna goes for the third base in the linear fashion down here. I think third there, fourth there is probably the best way to play this, but he might end up going out to the left side with that fourth and fifth base. This map is absolutely giant. So everyone has a slightly different kind of expansion patterns and that sort of stuff. Uh, if you guys are watching live, don't forget to hit exclamation mark bracket to explain where, what the games are from. And uh, exclamation mark, uh, uh, bloody hell, uh, best games to explain the show in case anyone's wondering if the games are live. Overlord speed. Oh, Reyna. Reyna gets in CCC first, gets denied by the Reaper, has no idea what's going on. He goes straight for OV speed. That's clever. Oh, that's especially clever because this is a third gas. Look at that. Oliveira, after killing the Ling, drops a third gas geyser. And that tells you there's going to be a double starport build. Now, we've seen in this tournament from Gumiho and a few other players, a double starport BC. I mean, there, there's been a bunch of different wild strategies. Uh, I know Maru actually going for just, uh, you know, went for, I believe it was double port Banshee into Battle Mech, which is absolutely wild. I don't think that's the best, but yeah, this is going to be Fusion Core and Second Starport. Where's that Second Starport? Hidden in the back of the base. This is such a clever build on this map for Oliveira. Unfortunately for him, even though Reyna was playing stock standard and I was a bit critical of his opening, this follow-up makes perfect sense here. You know it's a big giant map. Oliveira doesn't want to play a straight-up game here. And already he comes in, he sees no sparks coming off that Starport. Sees the Second Starport, sees the Fusion Core. And Reyna has basically, I wouldn't say has won the game there. But he's basically massively ahead. Now, if I was Oliveira, I would have considered cancelling that fusion core, maybe. But it's going to be a hard situation either way. Uh, I think since you've been scouted, the problem is that Reyna goes straight lair. He's going to go immediately for Aspire and Corruptors. So you want to go for probably two battle cruisers still. And then right after those two battle cruisers, you want to swap into full mech. And if you think about it, it's all about defending a Roach Corruptor push as the easiest kill timing for Reyna. So you kind of want to go pure siege tanks. On the other hand, what if Reyna goes muters? If he goes muters and you're building just siege tanks, you're not in a great spot. VCs can kind of defend that. So I think siege tanks if it's Roach Corruptor and uh, as Oliveira. And otherwise, you're going to have to just try and play anti-muter with like Thors and Mines mixed in. But you, he's going Yamato, which is fair enough. But I, I think if he commits to a third BC, that's essentially a game-losing play. Unless, I mean, it becomes an all-in. Seven queens, soon to be nine. I like this spore crawler. If the BCs get in between your bases, that's where they cause you problems. No spore on the natural, interestingly enough. He says, no, all my queens are there. I don't actually need it. I just need spores in between these bases. Because if there's BCs here, moving up the ramp to defend them can be a big issue. Rainer knows those BCs are going to be teleporting across. Oliver is continuing BC production, essentially turning this into an all-in. Because you're going for tech that's super, super one-dimensional. It's already been scouted to keep committing to it this deep in the game. Delaying the third command center until almost six minutes is definitely a big issue. Oliveira is going to be clearing creep on that left side. Double battle cruiser's out. Double battle cruiser teleports into the third base. 
And he's going to start flying on in there. Already grabbing an Overlord. I would have liked him to get that on the way out, potentially. Go for the drones first of all. But here we go. Queens and Sporecrawler are over there. Oliveira comes in. Picks off a gas, guys. But Rainer very quick to cancel that. Cancel, rebuild, cancel, rebuild. Queens will push this back. Spire's almost ready. Overseer comes in for the follow-up scout. Rainer sees the starports are still producing. And he sees how late that third command center is, which is massive. Rainer seeing that is like, okay, I just got to worry about more VCs and then more VCs and then more VCs. I wouldn't mind the Hellions trying to dart past here because there's only a few lings and roaches. But Oliveira does not find a way and he starts his second and third factory. Rainer sees everything. The Overseer is dancing in his base saying, oh my god, you only just started your second and third factory. And the Corruptors are starting up. It's going to be that Roach Corruptor we were talking about. Three BCs on the front, but they're teleporting in with Corruptors already building. Oliveira is not playing flexibly enough here. I mean, don't get me wrong, guys. It was a bad situation, but I don't think he had this mapped out. I think this was one of the builds he has the least practice with. And he's basically not expecting it to get scouted. And you can tell just from the way he's playing it that this is not the situation he wanted. On the other hand, he's going to kill a lot of queens here. He's actually getting good damage. A fourth BC comes in as well. But I think there's already 11 Corruptors on the way. So even though this is looking like it's getting good damage, it needs massive damage. One BC teleports out. These three BCs, the problem is at least two of them do not have teleport available. And that is a big, big issue. So he's going to try and fight here as best he can. Uh, trying to fight the Corruptors as they come out just one or two at a time. But you can see here... One Battlecruiser will fall. And already, I mean, units lost up is in his favor, but one BC is 700 resources. As the next BC goes down, that's going to be a problem. Gets a few more Corruptor kills. It does force a massive Corruptors from the opponent. His BC will teleport home. Two BCs get on out. Rain is only on three base saturation, but does he need anything more? He's making Roaches, he's making Corruptors. And when Oliveira moves out to take that third base, it will get swarmed. Now, I would criticize Rainer for not taking a fourth base. I think it's very important he starts that fourth hatchery. You can see he's sending the drone out there now. Uh, Evo chamber so we can get some upgrades for his attack and uh, armor could be very useful as well. Corruptors flying into that base. There's not much there other than the BCs and two Widow Mines to cover them. Oh, Widow Mine does get a pretty good shot off and the Corruptors will back off now as that turret finishes. Very well placed turret guarding the production. A couple Cyclones do come out. I think Siege Tanks have to be the name of the game. Remember I was saying, if they go Corruptors, you know he's going to play Roaches and Siege Tanks are the key. One or two Cyclones for Mobile Anti-Air is a good idea, but trying to build Cyclones, uh, you've got to be really quick on your tech when you've had a bad start like Oliveira has. But Oliveira being a little bit too slow to adapt in this game, it was terrible from the moment his build was scouted, but he, he needed to do some next level adaptations from here. Yes, I'm being critical of him, but let's be real. Once Reina scouted it with the Overlord speed, Oliveira had a sinking feeling in his stomach. Rainer said, yep, I caught you doing some cheeky BS. There's no way you're taking altitude from me, mate. And Rainer takes map one. All right, a nice dominating start to the series, Rainer, with a very clever Overlord speed opening. But has to be careful of those command center firsts. I do think, you know, skipping the early workers can be a good way to do it. Uh, all the early Zerglings to get a few more drones out. Oliveira is going for the Barracks Gas here on Dragon Scales. And uh, it is indeed Kaizy Gaming for both of these players. Uh, drone's going to move down to that expansion. And I really wonder with this map, it's got a decent push path. We have seen a fair few 8 Barracks builds on this map where the, the Terran players try to push through. I think one of the key areas is because the Zerg often ends up with a 3rd or 4th there, the other base there. Terrans have been pushing, and we've noticed that Siege Tank there is disgusting. Tank there, tank there, because they reach quite far forwards. And then you can kind of branch your Marines forward and threaten this base and threaten that base. And it's really hard for the enemy to deal with. And if you can push from there and then get Siege Tanks over here, they're basically reaching very far down. Um, we see a Siege Tank behind these rocks if they don't get taken down. Marine Tank Pushes have really excelled on this map so far, and that's part of why the 8 Barracks uh, push with just mass Marine, 12 Marines building at a time, and uh, and a Siege Tank, a couple of Medivacs, eventually Liberators coming in has been very popular here. On the other hand, when a build becomes popular, um, it does become something that the Zergs are extra wary of. And you've got to be... I, I think that there's always a, a, a catch, right, between playing the strategy that's predictable but effective on the map and being unpredictable and saying, well, maybe this isn't as good for this map, but you know what? I'm going to prioritize surprising my opponent. It's very hard to say because Rain is so solid and so greedy, you don't want to be playing inefficiently. I think you can almost afford to be a little predictable against him because he is so greedy, um, but you just need to be incredibly tight on your execution. We'll see what Oliveira opts for in this game. Got a Marine coming out there after the Reaper and a Reactor should be going down right now. There we go. 
Reaper comes in, starts to hit a drone. Only two Zerglings here. The other two Zerglings are a little slow to get down from the main base. And nice Reaper dance so far, but Reina's micro has been pretty solid. Oh. And that Queen, it feels like there's a lot of time in this base. Where is that? Why is that Queen so late? What is Reina's opening? Did he go pool first? Am I, am I blind and wasn't paying attention? He went pool first here? Like, what the hell? Why was that Queen from the Natural so delayed? Uh, uh, <laughs> all right, I'm going to go back and check the replay of the opening. This was something weird happened in this game, that's for sure. Oh, the Reaper's denying the third as well. Yeah, Reina's opening is super weird. This is what I get. I'm talking about strategies for the, the mid game, not paying attention to the openings. Lazy caster pig. That is a very delayed third base as well. Wow. Rain is built very peculiar here, but he's got two mineral lines saturated at 320. That's that's incredibly quick. Reaper's gonna come in. Queen will push that one back. He sees no one on gas. That's what Oliveira was looking for there. He was like, dude, what's going on? He's actually going for a nice quick third command center. Stim coming in before Starport or second barracks. Wow, okay. What is this build order? Oliveira. I've never seen that before. Stim so early. And he's just going Hellions. Then I guess he's going to go three racks, then Starport, right? Oh my god. Okay, yeah. Four Hellions straight into three racks. Yep. Oh my. Oh me. Oh my. All right. This is going to be a big, juicy build up straight to the bio game. Surprisingly, the Hellions are sitting at home right now. I'm surprised he's not poking. Uh, often players will poke with a Reaper and two Hellions, leave the other two at home. Feels like he's worried that Rain is going to try a big Ling run by or something like that. Behind this, Reina's third base should be finishing. You can see he's already long distance mining that hatchery. And his Overlord will go in. Two Marines going to pick up a nice kill. Of course, Reina sees the barracks, so he knows that this is bio, not mech play. Double Engineering Bay goes down in the back of the base. And for Reina, of course, he's back on gas now. He's got a second gas going down, which has become a lot more popular to get that second gas around 4 minutes 4.30 lately. And a lot of the Zergs are going Lair. Bailing Nest, and also two Evolution Chambers, all in pretty quick succession. So it's a mixture of the old fast Bailing Speed build without delaying your upgrades too long. Does just usually delay the third base getting fully saturated by a little bit. Hellions managed to get a Creep Tumor, not too bad. Bailing Nest goes down. Is he just attacking the rocks? Looks like he was. You can see the Overlord pattern here for Reyna. He's pretty conservative with this Overlord pattern. Doesn't want to get surprised by a Viking picking off Overlords for free. Does give him a little bit less vision of this, though. He should really have a pretty good idea of what's going on, though. I, I do think, seeing that barracks timing, he should know that there's a third command center out there. And Rain is not really showing any signs of being afraid. He's got 19 Zerglings, 10 more. Oh. Actually, wait, wait, wait. I said that. Does Rainer think he's being two base timing? Rain has misread this game. He's massing Zerglings right now off just 55 drones. Which makes you think that he thinks it's a two-base timing. Now he sees the command center. Let's go to Rainer's camera. I think Rainer maybe he's just seen the command center on the minimap now. He's dropping two Evo chambers. He's going back to droning. I think he may be realizing that he has severely screwed up. Now, sometimes he masses slings off 60 drones, but 55? This is very, very uncharacteristic for Rainer. Maybe looking for a big surprise attack. There's plenty of Marines. Look at that. They just shut him down. And this is a good start for Oliveira to this game. The Hellions push him back from the third. Rainer is not ahead in this game at all. And it feels like now Oliveira is getting a little bit of speed, a bit of wind in his sails, picking up some momentum. And uh, it's going to have a very good shot to tie up the series in this game. 1-1 upgrades are about a minute ahead for him. Rainer's 1-1 does start up. Oliveira is going to move around now with his first double drop on the map. Combat Shields was remembered. Unfortunately, his armory... He's going to be a little bit late as this 1-1's one already almost finished. And Oh, no, 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 Oliveira! Oh, no! That's a lot of lings, man. Those Marines are going to get absolutely hammered. Can he do some damage on the other side of the map? He drops right into the Queens. Oh, man, this is this is really bad for Oliveira, guys. He's got to do damage here. His SCVs at home are going down. He's just got Marines rallying out as well as his workers fighting. These Marines are going to get gunned down pretty inefficiently as well. He'll get a few Queens, but if those Queens actually focus the Metabacks, that would be huge. And... The end of that trade is very bad for uh, Oliveira. Letting those lings up that ramp, a big issue for him. And you can see at the end of the day, seven SCVs. He also had to transfer workers all the way from his third. He's a little uneven on the saturation right now. And losing all of that marine pressure on the front. A huge turnaround. Reina, very, very advanced when it comes to putting himself behind from not being so good on his scouting. He didn't pay attention to his reads. He should have known from the barracks timing that this was not a two-base build. 
because there was no starport units. And that's something he forgot to factor in, Rainer, with his scouting. Ooh, but he misread it early, but now he comes back with a giant Ling run by. And watch out for that Widow Bite. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh, they tried to dance around it, but I think Oliveira retargeted a few times. Banelings get in and kill six SCVs. Luckily for Oliveira, those four SCVs do survive. Nonetheless, a very nasty situation to be in for Oli. Oli is very fragile right now. He's got a second factory there. Plus two attack, plus two armor does start up. He's got to get more damage. There we go. Nice Reaper Grenade gets three queen kills. Oh, Rain is back down to just eight queens. I mean, what the hell? I said back to just, and then I read the actual number on the unit tab, and I said, Rainer, what the hell, mate? That's an illegal move. You can't make that many queens, you freak. Ling's running in on the third base at the same time as well. The SCV's trying to pull back out of here, but it feels like, oh no, these units are rallied into his main right now. What's going on? And Widowmine even hitting the SCV is a big problem for him. Tries to drop in the main. Spore Crawler does push it back. Rainer is so fast. You gotta, you gotta remember the APM tab doesn't really tell you the story of just how quick Rainer is. When it comes to speed, he is one of the fastest in the game. Him and Clem are probably the fastest in terms of raw reaction speed and multitasking. Nice Widow Mine, but that clears the way for the Banelings. And even more SCVs rallying into their doom. Oliveira desperately needs to get damage done. Looks like he's killed a few more queens on the front. Yet every queen he kills, another two pop up. What the hell? I really feel like Rainer is playing a style like he's the Hydra of Zerg. He's lost nine queens. He's got nine queens. It feels like some sort of bloody impossibility. It's like, what the hell? Each time you stab him, he splits in two and then they regrow to the original size. Oliveira on the back foot and on only 50 workers. He's got no fourth base on the way. Just Widowmine's bio and drilling claws. Rainer is still shoving at him with these big Ling backstabs that have been causing so much troubles. Three Marines and a Hellbat. The Hellbat has eight kills. The Marines are on four kills, three kills and five kills. I mean, it's a cool little squad that he's been working on this angle with, but he's got to be careful because at home, that's where Rainer keeps getting these awesome, awesome engagements. Oh my God, look at that as well. The Widow Mine drags, gets dragged by that Zerglings into the SCV line. We've got Liberators coming in. Is that going to allow him to get back in it? Widow Mine drop, Liberator. These are the sort of harassments that can get you back in a game because it pulls your opponent's attention away. But unless your opponent is Rainer, in which case he's just too damned fast, mate. Banelings clear up those units. Widow Mines get in there. But Rainer's already pulled the drones away from the third. So he doesn't take any big Widow Mine hits. Just loses a queen. Liberator is causing lost mining time, but no actual kills. Rainer's scramble is unmatched. His ability to get back to his feet when his opponent tackles him to the ground and makes it messy is insane. That Hellbat finally goes down with nine kills. That squad of absolute deadliness do go down but you know what Rainer's economy is in a bit of disarray the problem is that Oliveira doesn't even have his third mining it is of course in big it trouble those widow mines not quite able to fire that was the big hope was that these widow mines are able to recycle and fire I think even that sport and these queens will clean up in the main as well he's gonna go for another widow mine drop but the bailing run buys will not stop we've got a five burst base zerg under heavy harassment pressure but he's surviving on 63 drones and he's going to close the upgrade gap. 2-2 two, two versus 1-1 one, one was a big upgrade gap for a long period in this game, but at no point did Oliveira have the numbers to really use that upgrade advantage. Reyna was trading in small trades, 1-1 one, one versus 1-1 one, one for a long time. By the time the upgrade advantage hits, Oliveira doesn't even have a massive units to use it. Nice on Burrow on the Widow Mine for Oliveira. Good reactions by him, but Rainer focuses it down. Good focus on those Banelings, but there's still too many Zerglings with the swarm. Single Zerglings and Banelings taking most of these Widow Mine shots. That Widow Mine not quite able to fire, but look, watch out for this one. Once again, the spreadies are brilliant. Behind this, Widowmine drop comes in one more time. Seven kills, eight kills, ten kills. Do go down, not too bad. Widowmine does clean up the lings on the north side. Oliveira making a last stand. He has a handful of Marines, each one with a Gauss rifle, and honestly just fighting only with the will to live and defend their brothers in arms. But they are against an absolute swarm of Zerg that repopulates. It does not care. Rainer does not show emotion or feeling for his soldiers. There are more where they can come from, and he does not mind throwing them into the meat grinder. He's on five bases. He's got the bottom left secured, this base secured, there is still a hole in the creep to the top right, which it looks like these nine Marines and three Batavaks are going to try and abuse, but he's just got so few units on the map. Plus three attack is on the way for Oliveira. He's going to keep trying to push in. He doesn't want to give up. This is the tournament of his life. If he goes down 0-2 here, coming back from here is a near impossibility versus Reyna. 14, 16 more SCVs go down. Every time he hits that angle, he gets smashed on his third, even with a tank sieged in the mineral line. He's now down to 38 workers. He's going to go for a double drop down the left side. He says, okay, if working the right angle isn't working, let's work the left and the right at the same time. Rainer continuing to morph Banelings and roll them into that mineral line over and over again. He's got an infestation pit on the way behind this as well, does Rainer. He's got so much Ling Bane poking in there. Does get pushed back by the tank mine rally.
But here we go. Attacking on that right side. Those units way too weak. Oliveira doesn't find anything. Tries to push in the left side. The queens say, no, 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 silly Terran player. Reyna with his... He has a disgusting of queens on the left side of the map. For those who don't know, a murder of crows... A, uh, you know, a school of fish, a disgusting of queens, which is when you have one injecting all five bases and you still have eight on defense duty with an overseer just shutting down, drops on the left side. Rainer is at 88 drones, 15 queens, 10 banes, 50 zergens. The one thing we can criticize him for is that so much supply is in queens and drones that he doesn't actually have the biggest army right now. He's only barely up in army supply and he will be down in upgrades in about a minute. But, I mean, he's got creep everywhere except this right flank. The whole middle of the map is covered. Oliveira is forced to move down the right because that is the only open area. But if Rainer just gives this base up and backstabs, he cannot lose. He's got a new base going up there. He could even expand over here. Um, Oliveira needs a perfect fight followed by a perfect fight. After that, he'll need three more perfect fights and then maybe, just maybe, going in for a big flank is Rainer. but his Zerglings were a little far behind. Nonetheless, he gets the tanks. Most of the Banelings do not connect with the Marines, though. Oliveira with some pretty good Marine micro, and he focuses all the Banes down. Oh, brilliant positioning. Rainer needs to get out of that. Rainer does pull back. Great positioning. He even gets the overseers for Oliveira, making the most of an overwhelmingly bad situation. He comes in now. Rainer is morphing Banes on the front line. A little bit cocky here from Rainer. He's been crushing this game so far. There's no need for him to fight. Every Marine has a personal medevac, and they're soon to have plus three attack. Backstab is ruining Oliveira at the same time. Oliveira is... Oh, he's focus firing the Banes. He's focus firing all of the Banes. And remember, there's so many medevacs there. That's eight medevacs. So the Marines are barely dying to these Zerglings. The Zerglings do not have Adrenal or 3-3. Rainer is funneling into a terrible fight for no reason right now. There's no reason, remember, for him to even defend this angle. That's like, eight, it's nine Marines with eight medevacs, or now seven medevacs. One of them died to the Queens. The Queens are transfusing. The Lings are coming forward. Rainer is way ahead in economy and numbers. But maybe with the Widow Mines, a reinforce is arriving. Maybe Oliveira can turn this into something. Those Widow Mines could land big hits. Oliveira sees an opportunity. Reyna has to back off from this angle. He he's got to wait for Banelings, but he keeps on attacking into the fight. He's very cocky right now. Reyna knows he's ahead and he doesn't want to give up ground, but he is at more than double the worker count. This is Oliveira's last army. Reyna just needs to stop this army and he's got it. One more. Baneling gets focused down. The Baneling goes down. A few more Banes come in. The tank focuses it. The Marines focus it. The focus fire from Oliveira has been next level. Large and in charge. The Marines are counterattacking. All Rainer needs to do is pull back and morph Banelings further back. But he keeps morphing them just in front of the Marines. He's morphing Banelings there. The Baneling Nest! The Baneling Nest is going to go down. Nine Banelings are all that's morphing right now. Rainer being way too cocky trying to defend that base. The Marines did just double stim, so they are very fragile. But if he gets these last Banelings with those Medivac healing, he might have it. Three Banelings finish morphing. Three Banelings finish morphing. Two connect. And the Marines go down, and Oliveira's last ditch thrust into Reyna's territory. It seems to be stopped in its tracks. He's still got nine Marines in a corner with the Medivacs, but I think the Medivacs are mostly out of juice, and there's enough Zerglings to defend it. Reyna just made that so much scarier than it needed to be. I don't know why he was fighting in this area when he's, he's you know, literally got a Terran who's got no economy behind it. But Reyna, I think, getting a little bit cocky, and he was just shocked that Oliveira was microing as well as he was, because... Uh, very few players, even Maru, I think, and Clem, w are unlikely to have clicked on the Banelings as regularly without messing it up as Oliveira. Only in that last second did the Banelings get through to the Marines, and I think that's because Stim had expired on those Marines, so they weren't shooting as fast as they were previously. But up to that, he focused down every single Baneling, didn't get hit once by them in like six, seven consecutive fights over three or four minutes. That was an impressive streak of near-perfect micro for Oliveira, allowing him to give himself what appeared to be a chance in the game. Now, Rainer has had a chance for that big 76 worker economy to work, and now he's up in army supply. He's got three uh, adrenal glands. He doesn't have three, three, but he does have adrenal glands. He's got his Banely Nest rebuilt, of course. Burrows is zergling on that base. And the Widow Mine here, just gonna set that one off potentially. And nice redrop with the Marines, but just too much Ling Bane. You can't focus down that many Banelings. Drop on the left side for Oliveira. Still playing a nice scrappy game here. I mean, it's incredible that he almost got back in a winning situation, but now he's fighting more damage anyway. The medevac, unfortunately, will die to the spore crawler with a marine inside it. The marine's on the right side. Pick it off more banelings. This is what we're talking about. That baneling focus fire has been pretty legit for Oliveira, but at a certain point in the game, it's a numbers battle, and Raynet does manage to clean that one up despite a bit of a brush with death. GG, well played. 2-0 lead for Raynet. Up against the wall now, going into game number three. Oliveira in the top left side, and he's going to be going for that post barracks STV scout. Rainer in the bottom right. 
So Kaizy Gaming Team Kill, Rainer here on Neo Humanity. He's looking poised to win the series 3-0. Now, if we did check back that early game, we saw that Rainer accidentally went 18 hatch in that last game. His hatchery was about 10 seconds late, which meant the queen was about 10 seconds late. Really messed up his opening for no good reason. He just forgot to send the drone to the natural. Showing us that Rainer may be a little bit uh, nervous, even though he's doing some things excellently, maybe a little bit nervous. And I, I think, you know, attacking constantly, he had the whole map covered in creep except one area, and all he needed to do was give up that base, the equivalent of this base on this map, and fight anywhere else, and he'd be fighting on creep, getting time to get more banelings. Rainer choosing to run forwards and fight there was a stubborn decision, one which almost cost him that game. And did look a little flustered afterwards. Um, funnily enough, Oliveira looking pretty calm up there on the stage as well after these matches, even though he's had a pretty horrendous start to the series. I thought he was doing well in the early game, but then that big Ling run by getting all those Marines on his natural, getting a whole bunch of SCVs, really took the wind out of his sails. And he's going to try a third command center build once more here, going third command center uh, into the second gas, usually on the natural, and rallying on down there. Reaper hasn't found any damage this time. Rainer's actually got his queen out on time, which is, of course, a big difference. And interestingly, he's building third queen in the main rather than the natural straight away. Normally, you prioritize the queen on the natural because you want your lava inject to pop here because this is where you want your drones to be popping out, closer to the natural on the third mineral lane. But Rainer doing things a little bit differently to how he normally does. Starts that fourth queen on the expansion. Reaper still hasn't really done much. Something to be wary of on this map is there is amazing tank spots here. I don't know about the right side of the map so much. I, I don't really, I haven't seen too many tank pushes up here, but I guess tanks up there could be hard to deal with. And oh yeah, if they get tanks wedged in there, that could be great. Or even back there, potentially. Very hard to get to those with Ling Bane. This might be a good map for Roach Ravager. The more I look at it and think about it, this third base especially, I think Terrans will be tempted to take that, but it's actually very vulnerable to big Roach Ravager assaults. If they get enough units out here, obviously they can defend, but I feel like you can bile across the gap quite well as well. Something to be wary of. Oliver is going to go for a Banshee here, and uh, that'll keep him very safe against anything like a Roach attack, but Rain is showing no signs of that. He's just droning on up. 38 drones to 32 SCVs so far, of course, with the mules dropping. That's uh, pretty much to be expected. It's pretty even economy. Oliveira almost loses a Reaper. But look at this creep spread. One, two creep tumors on the left. Already a creep tumor on the right. He's got creep spreading through his main base as well. Missing a little bit of inject time in the main. Bit uncharacteristic for Rainer. But look at that. Overlord slides in the back door and he sees Starport building. Now, this is interesting. This is Banshee without cloak, guys. So, Oliveira just playing safety Banshees. And actually queuing up a second one as well. Normally, you just go one in this scenario. But he's basically saying these are very defensive. I'm going to use them to poke around. Maybe pick off some creep. Maybe kill a drone. And usually, the opponent, when they see the Banshee builds spores, right? Builds a lair. And he goes, oh, get all this anti-air. And then if you don't commit to cloak, you're like, oh, okay, I'm just going to make sure they never die. And these guys are going to stop run by us for the entire game. Rainer had a roach warrant on the on the way. He cancels it, builds a baneling nest. So he was thinking about that roach tech. He's decided not to. <clears throat> Did he actually see the extra barracks go down? No, he did not. So he's not 100% sure it's bio, but he seems to be assuming so. Hellions do clean up some more creep tumors over on that right side. That's a total of four tumors, one Zergling, one Overlord. Not bad pickoffs by any means. The creep spreading out to the left side. The Banshee does actually see that creep tumor. Let's see if Oliveira picks up on that and does micro that in for the kill. Looks like he's a little bit busy elsewhere on the map. And comes in just a second too late. That's unfortunate. Not worth the scan, I think, to kill that. Two more barracks are finishing. Double engineering bay as well. And on Rainer's side of the map, he's now going up to his third and fourth gases. And no doubt looking to saturate that fourth mineral line as quickly as possible. Spores come in. Like I said, you save 100 minerals, 100 gas. And I mean, it kind of sucks because often you can get damage. But against guys like Rainer, whose defense is so good, it feels like the Banshees go in. They kill one or two drones. You lose a Banshee, maybe even lose the second one. And then it was just a big waste of investment. In this case, hey, you forced a response. He's built 10 queens. He's got a spore in each base. So, you know, you've actually achieved something from this. It's, uh, it's not too bad. Going up to 4th and 5th barracks, and interestingly, a Spire for Rainer. So Rainer's going to go muters into double upgrades. Who is building this? This guy. Okay. Bringing drones off his rally. Doesn't want to interrupt the mining on his bases. You'll notice players are doing that more and more these days. The innovation trick of rather than pulling workers off that are already all nicely kind of doubled up and saturated on the bases, they try to pull workers that are rallying out that aren't already mining just to interrupt the mining less and less. Now, Rain is clearing his minerals so he can get a fifth base on the left side. He'll need that just as a macro hatch eventually. Anyway, he's already on 75 drones, which is pretty damn high. Eight racks. Eight racks coming in. 
All right, guys, we're going to see a classic matchup. We we've actually seen the eight racks destroy versus Muta play in this tournament. I kept talking about how Mutas were going to be really big this tournament because the maps are a little bigger. And so far up to this point, the Terrans have been very brutal. Like Clem did it versus Ragnarok in the groups, just eight racksing pretty much every game, even when they don't know it's the Spire. They seem to just have a, a, an instinct of, hey, let's go for an eight rack. So that makes it really difficult for the Muta player to stop that army from just shoving in. The Mutas want more time. They want to dance around and backstab and use their mobility. Um, now, Baneling Speed should be finished. He's only got five Banelings. That's a pretty big push coming. So Raynan needs to morph a bunch more Banelings right now. There we go. He's going to morph six more Banelings. He's got five Mutas on the way. Should be fine here. But I like the way he's clearing an avenue for Creep. Also broke down the rocks in the middle. Oliver is setting up for a push down that right side. It's just one tank, a ton of marines building at a time. He's not even bothering with add-ons. This is a very committed push. 12 marines at a time. I would love to see a little bit of a run by on that base. As it is Rainer right now on 79 workers. That's pretty greedy for Mew to play. And he's of course up 15 workers. He's got a lot of lings and Muta's going down the left side. But that might mean his right side is a little undefended. I don't think he sees this army. I don't think he has enough vision to see this army coming. This army is going to be a big surprise. Rain is going to have to give this base up. I don't think he can fight here just because he's so blindsided by it. The Muters and the Lings are going to come in on that left side. The Muters could kill the Banshees, but they've already flown past, which means the Banshees will defend these Zerglings. Uh, the Muters should definitely go for those. Nice move with those Muters. They're going to clean them up. A great evacuation on the right side. Not making the same mistake from last game. Rainer says, nope, not going to fight in a bad position. And he clears out the whole third. Oh, Oliveira. This push looked so promising, but he was not expecting Muters. He's taken so much damage. Now, it's not enough Muters to completely overwhelm a Marine Rally. He's going to have to do more damage with this push. The Lings do get pushed back there as the Marines come out. The main base is getting ransacked, but I think those muters will go down in the moment. Rainer's gonna have to give up this base, I believe. Oh, he's bleeding into this a little bit. Rainer's after gonna either he has to either go now or pull back. He's gonna go for it. Rainer starting to shove in, but the Banelings are all stuck behind the Queen. A big mistake on the engagement. The Queen blocking that. There's no Zerglings in here. Where are the Zerglings? That was pure Baneling going in a spready. Rainer poops the bed. What the fudge? I did not realize that that was what he did in this game. What the hell? Pig pretending to not know what happens isn't the same. You guys don't realize a lot of these games I'm I'm working, I'm I'm like preparing other things, I'm doing signings, I'm I actually honestly and even the parts I do see, I'm often eating or I'm getting hair and makeup or I'm looking at a different game on a laptop. I, I don't need to pretend that much. There's always details you miss when you're live at these tournaments. I didn't cast most of these series as well, so or I'm too busy shitting on Eon Blue. He's there being like, oh, Serral, put your dick in my mouth. And I'm like, dude, stop harassing Serral. He doesn't want to do it. Fuck off, Eon Blue. And Eon Blue's like, oh, please, please. Um, no, seriously, though. Uh, so, yeah, I did not realize this queen. Look at this. <laughs> you called for it, Eon Blue. <laughs> yes, you shouldn't have said anything, Dobby. Yeah. So looking at this fight here. Okay, he does come in with a Ling flank from behind. But without Banelings joining with that, that's kind of tough. He's done massive damage. So the thing is, I actually think if Rainer just gives this base up, guys, he's fine. Because it's 43 SCVs for Terran. Like, I don't think it's great. But the thing is, 1-1 one, one upgrades aren't finished. I think fighting before 1-1, one, one, just you've already waited so long. I think you just have to give this base up. And it hurts. It kind of sucks. But if you get the right engagement, you should be in a good position. You can see he's already lost a lot of uh, Zerglings and some Banelings and a couple Queens. And the thing is, he just doesn't have an angle to fight this. I think if maybe half of this army was up here and he had another like 20, 30 links coming out, this might have worked. But one of the big problems here is that he lost this hatchery and all the lava popping out of it, which means he's only on three hatcheries and he missed a lot of injects. Notice how once the action kicked up, we've got two lava injects, two lava injects and this hatchery. None of these hatcheries are injected. He's got 900 minerals, <clears throat> um, even though he's building these this extra hatchery over here and here. And uh, you can imagine if he had an extra 800 minerals, let's say 700 minerals of Zerglings. Um, let's even say 500, right? What is that? That's like four times five. An extra 20 lings makes a big difference because you need lings to actually jump on the tanks and kill them really quickly. It's, it's really huge. But yeah, if he just pulls back further to the left and sets up a better flank, I think he can do this. But this plug was disgusting. This plug right here. Oh... So his Ling flank that came from behind completely dies to the Marine Hellion. And then these guys run in separately. Very disjointed attack from Raynor. <clears throat> and you can see he actually killed most of that army. He did kill most of that army. There's no real reinforce for this or anything. 
So if he'd done that a bit better and cleaned that up, even if it means losing the hatchery, Rainer has a much better chance of bouncing back in this game, but fighting just before 1-1, and this is the big power of the 8 racks push against Muters, it does tend to push well before your upgrades are finished, which is quite scary for the Zerg. But Rainer, absolutely, I thought he wasn't going to make the mista same mistake. He gave up that base. He actually needed to give up another base as well. Oliveira, though, with some crisp push timing and staying calm and continuing to push forwards, even while Muters were tearing up his, th his Bane. Very, very good calm under pressure from Oliveira. All right, he gets a point on the board there with a nice decisive eight racks. Very good, just consistent moving forward of that push. It's scary to push on creep into a big wall of queens and lots of banelings, but he mounted enough pressure quickly enough that Rainer fell apart underneath that. But Rainer, it's opening looking a little bit cleaner this time. 15, 16 seconds along. Yeah, this queen's a little late. His hatchery was a few seconds late again. So Rainer's slipping up on his openings a little bit. He's got to start sending that drone to the natural. This is a, a very basic thing. You don't really expect from Rainer. This is more like dark style, messing up your opening uh, and then not caring about it. I think Rainer actually is much more consistent with his openings usually. So more of a sign of him playing off. Whereas you see dark mess up his opening. It's very standard for him. You don't really see it as a change in his mentality. Inject in the main, but look how look. Yeah, this queen is quite a few seconds slower. So. Definitely something to keep an eye out for Rainer in this series. He's still up two to one and just needs this game, of course, or the next to, to finish it off. Oliveira has no room for error. On a big map like this, you can't... Well, you could do an eight racks. Absolutely, actually. You take the front third. Rainer's taking the front third. We've seen that push coming down this angle. Uh, more commonly, though, we see Biomine multi-prong on this map, kind of trying to pick the Zerg apart. And especially if the Zerg takes this fifth base, holy crap tanks layered around this ridge and attacking around this corner becomes a death trap for the zerg where we saw like solar as for instance a few games and a few other zergs just attack around it if the heron sets up there you have to come around the south side and flank from the open and cut off the reinforce you cannot attack around a corner there which i've seen far too many zergs do on this map time and again we'll see if that comes into play or potentially rainer just avoids that fifth expands to the far top and the far bottom at the same time Interestingly, Liberator comes in for Oliveira here, and the Barracks is going to lift up and build a tech lab a little bit further back. Rain has been pretty consistent at hiding his Overlord in the back of the base. I love that move. Spots the Command Center, veers down to the south, and then works his way up here. So we can send that in a little while. Hellion's moving around the north of the map. I would say Hellion Lib, one of the best, most flexible openings versus Zerg. Not the most reliable versus Rainer. Problem you have with it is that Arena is just so fast and good at splitting his queens. He was the first player to start splitting his queens up. He revolutionized Zerg versus Terran by getting these two queen control groups going. Now, he's accidentally got a drone on this queen control group, so you're going to see him accidentally pull this drone to the front. <laughs> I'm a queen. I'm one of the lads. Okay, he fixes that, does send it back. Overlord does come in and sees... I don't know if we saw the Liberator coming out. But seeing that it built a non-add-on unit, he knows it's a Viking or a Liberator. And sees the extra barracks coming down after that third command. And a Liberator working its way down the south of the map. Hellion's moving up the center, up the guts. And we're going to see the Zerglings hanging on out. Queen's trying to build up on all sides. Roach Horn is finished. Ooh-wee! Okay, where are we going to go for that fourth? Surely up here, right? Four Roaches are on the way. Did he skip Ling Speed? No, he's gone Ling Speed, but four Roaches as well. I don't really like this opening. I definitely feel like you're better off committing a bit harder to Zergling Queen or a bit harder to the Roaches uh, rather than going Roaches so early and the Zerglings. Maybe he does a little pressure with it and tries to pick off some Depot SCVs, but with three Marines building at a time already, I think you can easily deflect four Roaches. I don't think you're going to get a big rise out of Oliveira at all. Liberator. I like that the Liberator is like, hey, I've been spotted. I might as well just kill an Overlord, but then he pulls it home. Oh, that was an F2. That was an F2 for sure. Panicking, seeing these roaches coming. He might actually think it's a big Ravagerling, so he's committing really hard to the defense. Builds a bunker, starts a siege tank as well. But, I mean, it's pretty late, that roach pressure. So, oh, he cancels the bunker. Feeling confident is Oliveira. He's going to poke forward with the lib just to make sure. Sieging up out front that third base. Double Evo Chamber comes down behind this one as well. Now, Oliveira, for those who don't know, actually is a big practice partner of Serral, Hero, and Maru. And that is a big reason why he is actually quite scary, as he's the secret punching bag. I've heard people in the community calling him. The guy, when they want to hide builds from the top dogs, they go and play verse Terran matches with Oliveira, because he's happy to play on any server 
and doesn't mind playing with the ping, still plays at a very high level, and he's always good at keeping secrets on the builds, never never shares any secrets, he's very uh, honest, you can rely on him to not go and, and sell what you're going to be doing to your opponents. Queen's going to be pulling back there, Marine's coming on forwards. Going to clean up a bit of creep on the front, meanwhile Hellion's on the top right, and Liberator in the back of the base, I like the three prong here. It's a lot of tumors that he just cleaned up. But double stim does mean the queens will do okay versus this. A few marines dying. Nice pullback on that queen. Good transfuse. A couple of marines fall. Meanwhile, Liberator does get three kills up there. Hellions roasting a few zerglings, but losing a lot of the Hellions as well. And three Hellions do survive. Those marines are starting to heal. Queens have respread creep, but they're in the open. These marines could heal and stim on that and get a big victory. Liberator repositioning in the south. Nice movement by Reyna, though. And that Liberator's going to go down. Oh, Hellion's getting in front. Hellion's trying to dart into the mineral line for a roasty toast. They get one line up on the drones. A second line, six drones go down. Not too bad. Marines grab another queen as well. Liberator does appear to go down. But overall, pretty good harassment by Oliveira. About even in the unit's lost trade. I... Oh, God. 91 drones? Reyna! What in the hell? I was like, that's pretty good harassment, guys. I look at the worker count. I'm like, how does he have 90 workers in the midst of that? He just got hit by three prong pressure for like a minute straight. And he's like, by the way, I now have 90 workers. I mean, he's going to need to build like three more hatcheries. He's got a super... F His hive is almost finished at eight minutes. I mean, the thing is, the only problem Rainer has right now is that he's on Roach Ravager. And you don't really want to attack in a Roach Ravager because it's so scary in the mid game. That's going to force Oliveira to be very turtly. And, and then Rainer is just going to be like, lol, free pass to Vipers and Ultras, I would imagine, has to be the next step. Double tank production, bio. There is a lead on the 2-2 upgrades. And a fourth command center is almost finished. I mean, Oliveira is pretty well set up for the macro game. He's going to move forward. No, 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 no. This is not a good move. If Oliveira shoves with these tanks, he could get swarmed by Ravages in the mid game. This would be a terrible call. Rain is just going to jump on it. Oliveira, a huge mistake for Oliveira getting caught out in the middle of the map. He screws the pooch there. He's got to just run. Just get out of there. Loses two tanks for free. Luckily, he saves the rest of the army. But a big mistake for Oliveira. And something which gives Reyna such a sigh of relief. Because now Reyna can completely swap to Ling Bane. He can go Viper Ling Bane uh, and either Corruptors or Ultras or both of the above. But even just pure Ling Bane. And you don't want any more Roaches in this game. This is a lot of Roaches already. 18 of them. Chews up a lot of your supply. Is not the most effective. Drop in the north is going to come in. Lings will surround that. Rainer is crushing this. 96 workers, which means this base will be instantly saturated. Does need to transfer a few more workers from his other bases over to it. He's going to be building another macro hatchery here. He's going to need a few more of those. Yeah, this is this is a lot of economy, Rainer. You're going to need so much production in this game to spend all that money you got coming in. Oliver is going to get tested in the late game. There's no kill move for him, and that's very worrying. I know I've seen him beat Dark in late game recently, but Rainer is such a strong beast in the late game, and Maybe you can push now since Rainer. I mean, Rainer's still got. He's got such a high work account and 18 roaches. Here's a big problem with Rainer's style seven queens. That wastes 14 ar supply. That's not army. They're useless units in a big fight. The Roach Ravager is another 36 supply. That's 50 supply of non army units plus 90 supply of drones. That means he's only got 60 supply to dedicate to Zergling Baneling, which are the actual good units that will win a battle. This max out push for Oliveira actually is very difficult to deal with. Rainer needs to be really massing Banelings right now and careful with how he takes this next fight. He needs to either abduct or blinding cloud all the tanks, and he needs to wait for Banelings. He should not really be fighting out here. He's 18 lava. He needs to remax right now. Rainer needs to hit his injects as well. Remember, he was missing injects in those previous games, didn't have the lava. You can see all of his bases aren't quite injected. He's trying to slow this push down. The Vipers did some parasitic bombs. Where are they? They need to be gathering energy right now. The Vipers go all the way back to the hive. They shouldn't be going too far back. He needs those blinding clouds. He's going to have to give up this base. Rainer losing workers on that right side he, he should not attack from one angle for sure if he just gives up the base which he's not doing Rainer, yeah again refusing to give up the base does he have the numbers the vipers coming in a little bit behind a giant spready for olivera blinding clouds land on some of the tanks but i gotta say overall a terrible choice for Rainer to fight there and once again he chooses to fight when there is no reason he has a base up the top he could have just moved the drones and set up a flank 
A very bad choice for Reina to fight. Oliveira mounting such surprising pushes, and he's just putting the pressure onto Reina, and Reina's falling apart underneath it. He's now remaxing on Roach Ravager, which is perfect for Oliveira. Those units will not scale well into the late game. Look at that Liberator. He drives a wedge through the middle, splits a lib to the south side. Oliveira with some lovely killer instinct. Nice ling run by for Reina. Will manage to get rid of one of these tanks. That's going to force a lot of units home. Few Marines, Marauders, and a Siege Tank going to try and defend the Liberator. Got so many kills. He's up to 28 kills right now. The Liberator on the south side up to seven. Lings do surround over there. They'll eventually get defended, but an amazing trade on the Ling run by that could keep Reina's hopes and dreams alive in this game. And indeed it will. It cleans up his entire rally. He loses another hatchery there. It's a good spread of units, but there's not much support for it. Reina's army is pure Roach Baneling, though, which is kind of trashed here. Oh, the Unsiege and the run home. He's going to try and get home. Reina needs to pursue him, but Reina doesn't realize. And now he's like, oh, shit, get him. Don't let him get home. If these tanks boost down and save the tanks, this would be such a clutch play for Oliveira. Oliveira comes. He saves two of the tanks. Nice moves for Oliveira. And it looks like he's finally defended at least the Marine run by the tanks. Sana Siege, a beautiful spread. You do not want to attack around that angle. But a couple of the ducks, definitely a good idea. Grabs two of the Siege tanks. Unfortunately for Rainer, he's lost that, that big worker advantage he had. He's lost one, two hatcheries. All the creep down the guts is gone. He needs to replenish that creep spread very much uh, with, with a lot of haste. And he needs to trade out this Roach Ravager for actual good units in this game. But Rainer choosing a fight there made very little sense. You have to be wary. When you're playing Roach Ravager, it's kind of like playing... If you're playing that into Hive Tech, it's kind of like playing Swarm Hosts, where it's like... These units are very good in small skirmishes and at picking away at your opponent. But if push comes to shove and there's a big fight, you better be very careful that you have enough army supply that's not Swarmos or not Roach Ravager. Because those units suck for their supply. A Ravager costs three supply and it gets its ass handed to it by a two supply Marauder. Um, same thing with the Roaches. They all basically just get blown up by tanks before they even deal any damage. And now there is a Ghost Transition on the way. So Rain is going to be re-droning trying to think about his next step in this game he's very good at playing scrappy late games i definitely don't think he's uh out of this game by any means i just think he was way ahead um or at least set up to be well ahead if he was just calm and collected and picked his fights a little bit better but shoving from one side has been the weakness of rain and now he's realizing let's keep my army split if i find two areas at once i can't just get clumped and stuck behind each other on the other side Oliveira is so brave right now. He's like, I'm just going to play a macro game. Mass command center, no worries. Going to build more command centers, more tanks, more ghosts. And he's actually going so heavy on tanks, which is very weak against Broodlords. But Rainer, known for stubbornly sticking on very basic tech units, he's doing nothing but Roach Ravager Baneling Viper here. Ling's on the north side coming on in. Nice defense set up here for Oliveira. That tank pushing this back very well. And he's just going to keep rebuilding his sensor towers to see when these things are coming in. Banelings on the south side dealing with a big push that's encroaching on that territory. I think Rainer might need to take this base in the top and try to saturate and mine these two northern bases out. This southern base, it seems like a pipe dream. It seems like something that is very unlikely to ever actually get up. Baneling Ravages clean up a few of those Marauders, but you don't want to chase too far into the tanks. Does get rid of the command center, which is not too bad. What is this? Five Dropper Lords! Dude, the Dongrei Goo move! Dongrei Goo did this versus Serral. It's such a good move. This is the TLO move. He was the guy who first I, saw, I first saw doing mass Ling drops in late game. It is so cheap. Lings are basically worthless. These units are, cost you almost nothing. The Overlords are very cheap. Just cost you 25 minerals and 25 gas to turn them into Dropper Lords. You've already got Overlord speed. Why not drop the main? Open a new front. Rather than the delay on something like a Nidus Worm, this just allows you to get very cheap expendable units into a position where they can instantly do damage. And with Adrenal Glands and plus two melee almost finished, that is such a clever way of just causing problems and multitasking issues for Oliveira, who's already struggling to defend this army roaming around the front. But holy crap, the spread is beautiful. And I gotta say, Oliveira has the perfect anti-ground army. He's very exposed to Broodlords, like I said earlier, but Raynor is very stubborn. You know, I, I, I often um, talk about how Infestors are one of the best units in the late game and uh, Broodlords are very good at countering tanks and Rainer is a very much of the belief that Infestors and Broodlords are worthless against Terran. I think he's had too many nightmares against Clem's Ghosts and Thors or something like that. Nice attack in the main. is going to get a few of these Ghosts as well. I think the attack on the south didn't really do that much though. Well, actually he killed quite a bit. He kind of broke the tank line. He gets cleaned up in the main, but... Let's keep an eye on that unit's lost tab. That'll give us a real good gauge of who's winning. Oh, Cloak Ghost coming from behind to take out the Vipers. Snipe the rest of the Ravages. That makes the fight pretty good for Oliveira, who's going to rebuild that row of turrets up there in the main. I think all the Vipers went down, yeah. So Ultras are now building, guys. Um, his first four Ultras. But against a player who's already got Mass Ghost, Tank, 
Ultra's, their only real strength is, of course, oh, accidentally attacks his own refinery there. A bit of a mistake there. Doesn't quite unsiege it in time as well. Oliveira chucking a bit of an MMA. Uh, a couple of siege tanks go down to this Ling run by, but they're not going to get too much actual economy damage. And as long as Oliveira replaces that siege tank, I think this position will stay solid for now. Another Ling drop trying to get in here. Oh, look at this. He knows the turrets are there, so Reyna's going to go around the south side. Very clever play by Reyna. He's just going to keep on ferrying Lings into the main. A very cheap way of opening up a new front. Broodlords would absolutely annihilate this, guys. I know ghosts can beat Broodlords, but that's only if you mess up your micro um, or, or or you're, you know, really unsupported with those Broodlords. And if your opponent has 10 siege tanks, you force those to unsiege, and then it's just a bunch of ghosts and a couple of marines and widow mines that don't have any support. He's just going to roll over with Ling Bane Ultra, though, while distracting with the Ling drop in the main. I love the way Reyna is keeping him busy on all sides and that is a big win gets a lot of those scvs but the spready is solid on the ghosts meanwhile lings are tearing down buildings in the main plus one or plus two vehicle weapons barely completes in time before those zerglings almost tear it down the next wave could take out these southern bases if Rainer just takes out the southern bases that'd be great but he needs banelings before he can do that he's gonna go for the ghosts one more time he says hey there's not many tanks left let's go for it and he's maxing on lings and ultras Rainer has great mineral income but he still has not taken that northern base nor has he transferred workers to this base this is something i've also talked to Rainer about He's very stubborn. He says infestors are always bad. Broodlords are always bad. And he basically doesn't have any flexibility in that viewpoint. He always builds infestors or broodlords once he's already lost the game. And then he says, see, they're really bad. And it's like, dude, 10 minutes earlier, you could have done it. But also with transferring to bases, I've told him many times, put workers on these front bases because you're not going to be able to hold these. You've got control now. But five, six minutes from now, Terran's going to be so well set up. He's going to be able to deny that mining. So you need to move workers to these bases now to mine them out earlier and deny the Terran from mining those minerals later. This is something where Reyna just shrugs his shoulders and says, I'm so good at the early mid game. I don't need to think about the late game. Yet his series versus Maru over the last two years seem not to have taught him too much in that regard. Despite that, Reyna is an absolute monster though. Good multi-prong attacks coming in. The Ling still distracting the main. He's borrowing them while the Ultras come in the front. But my God. The moment the fight turns, the snipes on those ultras are big. And we can see now an 11,000 resources lost gap between the two. Rainer is starting to run out of resources on his side of the map. He's still got bank for now, but he needs to take a few more gases, first of all. And he needs to transfer to these much harder to defend bases up in the north of the map, as well as try to secure the southern base. If he doesn't do that, he will simply mine out of resources far before his opponent. Oliveira, on the other hand, is doing a Maru-like defense. And it is something where every Terran beyond everyone else crumbles under this pressure. But Oliveira is just basically digging a hole, putting spikes in it. Rainer is flooding in, falling into that trench, into the spikes, filling it up, and then running across the bodies. And then Oliveira defends that wave, digs a new trench, fills it with spikes. Widow mines spread perfectly. Plus two Hellbats with blue flame, perfectly spread. Libs, tanks, bio, turrets, trying to get command centers. It's so hard to attack into this army. He is creating a minefield. Rainer, on a very basic army, is going to need to switch tack to get through this. Broodlords are 100% the answer. A couple of infestors to support them. He starts a spire now, but it may be a little bit too late. The Lings try to come in the north side. Not a good fight at all. The ghosts and the tanks are absolutely ravaging him. Even though the Banelings seem to be getting in there, notice they do not actually connect on the ghosts. Two or three ghosts go down for about 20, 30 banelings. Rainer is desperate right now. He's shoving it in. And we know that Rainer does not like patient games. If there's one thing that Rainer hates, it's you slapping his hands away and saying, keep those to yourself. Let's chill and macro for another time. 10 minutes. Rainer wants to fight. He wants to dance. He wants to skirmish. You know he's got that Italian rap in his ears right now. And his head is banging back and forth. And he's saying, let me fight you. But Oliveira is staying consistent in his style, which is the turtle style. It's the style that we didn't think would work too well on this map pool because of the spread on these bases. We thought Zerg would be heavily favored here, yet Reyna cannot find a way in. Finally transferring workers to these top bases. They're still not fully saturated. He still should transfer more, more workers. It's still lazy from Reyna in that regard. And this is something that not only he suffers, but pretty much every pro. I've seen several one game transfer workers to the front base. Pretty much no pro does this. So this is not just Reyna who has this problem. Pretty much every Zerg when they're up against a Turtle Terran makes this mistake. Parasitic Bomb and the Metavax does go in. Ultra Ling does get some nice trades. I like that pullback. That's a good one. He gets the tanks on the north. Rainer! Yes, this is it. Oh, wave 17 of Desperate Ling Bane. Ultra Multiprong finds the damage. Oliveira shaking his head no down going, oh, god damn. He was holding on so well, but these Lings just found massive trades. 
And Oliveira has got a lot of wounds to lick after that. He might even lose this bottom planetary. Indeed, he will. But it's a lot of Banelings to go into it. At least he can snipe the Ultras, potentially. And one Ultra does go down. Another couple of snipes fall. And it looks like another Ultra goes down. Three or four Ultras, a bunch of Banes. But more SCVs are going down. The Lings are unburrowing, trying to do what they can. The Siege Tank will clean that up on the left side. And Rain has got a Spire, but he has not made a great Aspire. Classic Rainer making tech, but then he's so focused on the fighting that he does tunnel vision a little bit and doesn't really get quick timings on that. At this point, Infestors would be game changing. Imagine just one or two burrowed Infestors. If he pops up by surprise and catches these ghosts, just one fungal could decide this game because Oliveira can barely afford to get back to a maxed army. Rainer still has bank. He's almost fully saturated the northern base and this base, this base down here as well. But you've got to remember, of course, that he's been 15,000 resources less efficient to do it. And each time Oliveira takes a new base, Oliveira can blanket that bad boy in mules off his six orbitals. He can saturate it and he can be way more efficient in the long run. I love that the ghosts are so far back in this. The Banelings coming forward. The SCVs are going to get hammered. Are they though? A few of them go down. Not that many. The Widow Mines, the Ghosts, the Tanks. Look how far back that tank line was. There's no way to get Vipers in range of Blinding Clouding those because there's turrets, ghosts, everything layered in front. Another tiny Ultralisk, the Smoltralisk does get sniped there. 72 Zerglings on the Remax Rainer needs. Where are the Infestor Broodlord swap? Where is it? There's still nine Siege Tanks on this map. They could clear these turrets, clear these ghosts. I mean, you could move around and abuse these positions, and all you need to do as Rainer is deny this one base. If Oliveira doesn't mind this base, his other bases are going to run out of resources. He'll get to Remax, and then he'll maybe have a few thousand more before he's dry. But Rainer is still headbutting with the Lings. He makes two Infestors now. Finally, two Infestors coming out. Very good call but no greater spire. So just a few infestors. He's looking for the ambush. Nothing else. I definitely would have... They're going to take a while to get energy. They're not going to come into play for a little while. Tanks are still shelling here. Sees the Hellbats there, which now have plus three, which means they one-shot Zerglings. Not going to work out. Liberator comes in the north side. Oliveira being a tricky little boy here. And remember, this base could have been much more mined out. Instead, he's barely mined from it, and now he's having that mining interrupted. Rainer missing a bit of an opportunity. Oliveira, on the other hand, right now has the dogged determination of a psychopath. He is doing his best Maru cosplay that we've ever seen. I have never seen Oliveira hang on against so many waves. Look at the spread of tanks! And he's still got those three tanks in the background. Whenever the Banelings think they're past the front line, they just get hammered. And Banelings are not it. They are not doing anything. Down 21,000 resources lost. I love the Ling drop in the main, but Rainer needs to get those Lings active right now. And even Cloak Ghosts are going to come up and start two-shotting those. Rainer is also getting counter-attacked right now. Oh no, his Vipers are getting taken out. Rainer's now making a Greatest Spire out of desperation. But he's taken far too long to do it. Those Siege Tanks have gotten value times value times value. A single Hellbat in the north, ruining Rainer's day there with 15 drone kills before the Zerglings cleaned it up. Lings in the main. Oh, look at that! The Ghost blocking for the Hellbat ruins those Zerglings and they have to pull back. Oliveira is just consistent. And you know what, guys? Everyone F2s. I always talk about how Terran's in this position, they F2. It's Clem's problem. It's why he loses these late games. He panic F2s. Oliveira, even when he moves all his ghosts, he does not pull everything. He only pulls the ghosts or certain units. He has not been panic selecting his whole army, whereas every other player has done that. Every single other player has been panic F2ing in these scenarios, except for Maru over the last few years. Maru never does it. It's why he's a god. Oliveira apparently copying the god, learning from the god, says, I can do that too. Let's just stay calm, cool, collected. Seems to be working. Two more drones going down. Three more Hellbats walking into this base. Rainer cannot get mining. I, I told you guys, this base is going to, as Oliveira gets more set up, you're not going to be able to mine off that. I've, I feel like a broken record. I've talked about this a thousand times, and the pros still will not mine this base out early. They never do, even when the Terran shows that their intent is to turtle to the 30, 30 or 40 minute mark. It's, uh, it's a bit of an issue. And it's going to cost Rainer big time if he can't secure that mining because his mining is dropping. And you can see the mining's relatively even. When you're trading at a 3 to 2 ratio or even worse than that, you need to be mining a lot more than your opponent. He's now going to lose that base. Five Broodlords. Six Broodlords are on the way, but he's only got two Infestors, which when you're dealing with 16 Ghosts is not enough. You need at least six or seven Infestors because Fungal is your main way of stopping those Ghosts from sniping your Broodlords. He's going to run in with the Lings, but there's so many units spread. There's always Hellbats everywhere. He does get rid of the tanks, which is actually pretty nice, but the Hellbats ruin so many of those Lings. And he loses another base in the north. Oh no! A Liberator there! And the Hellbats! Anyone call for some barbecue? These Hellbats are absolutely absolutely disgusting. They just ruin it. They absolutely annihilate the infestation. 
Um, someone called for an exterminator, and uh, Rainer, unfortunately, was the bugs that got squished out of this one. He's now out of money. He's lost all of his mining bases. He's got a few minerals there. He's trying to rebuild this base. He's essentially mining almost nothing. He's, re he's built an army, but he's only got like six broodlords. And now, of course, Oliveira's got all the time in the world. He can just build four or five Thors. They'll easy beat those broodlords. And it's, it's once again the classic Rainer. I will make Infested Broodlord only once I've already thrown 17 waves of other units at you. And it's clearly not worked for the last four or five. And that's a big issue for him. Like, I love the Ling Drop. I love the multi prong. But if he did all of that while transitioning to Infested Broodlord four, five, six, seven minutes ago, that wave of first Broodlords with Infestors, can you imagine if that hit when Oliveira took that big run by damage and was stuck at 150 supply for a minute or two? He'd be dead. There, there's no way. Ghosts landing snipes on Broodlords is tentative at the best of times. It really is. I mean, don't get me wrong, they're good versus Ultras and Lurkers, but Broodlords are so microable, you add a few Fungals to threaten, and it becomes a very dicey 100% micro and APM focused on one area. Imagine Ling drops in the main while he's trying to micro Infestors, or Ghosts away from Infestor, uh, Broodlord on the other side, and I love the way Oliveira just calmly set this up and said, no, 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 like, I'm just going to try and survive and get to those later stages, and he did so from a very bad early game as well. Remember that big push. He managed to get a giant fight that let him stay in this game. Even after that, Reyna had so much money. He was able to remax 17 different times in this game, but he's now down at 27,000 resource loss deficit. And he's still trying the Ling run buys, which you can tell work because most players panic with their control. But let's take a look. I just want to keep showing you guys the defense of Oliveira because he is just so well prepared. Yeah, the drops are being annoying in the main. But look at the spread. He's got... Oh, but look, his army's here. He f 2 No, no, he didn't. Okay, he just f 2 for the first time. God damn it, Oliveira. I was like, he's left two Hellbats at the bottom, and then I see them pull to the top. No! His bottom's wide open to Ling Run buys. Oliveira gets ahead, and now he does the silly F2. Please don't do that. Oh, no, his Orbital's gonna die in the main as well. It's getting repaired, but the Ling's will kill it. Oliveira, don't, don't, don't ruin what I've been praising you for this whole time. I don't think he will. He's just gonna shove, liberate it. There's too many Hellbats for the Broodlords to do anything. There's only two Infestors. He's already lost the energy on one of them. The Liberators, there's nothing that shoots up. The Liberators are killing the Broodlords. Lings are running into Hellbat Marauder. Oh my god, the Ultralists are just getting blasted. Snipes going down, and Reyna, he's so good in the early and mid game usually that's where his land is that's where he wins these games that fight down here against that first big maxed army that he attacked into rather than giving up this base attacked from one side took a terrible fight that was a big mistake gave up momentum from there though dude the fact that he kept these hellbats spread across these bases the lings kept looking for an opening they just couldn't find it the main base he chipped away at did reina but Oliveira's Hellbat efficiency, keeping those Hellbats spread across the bases to deal with the Lings, the tanks and the libs and the ghosts to deal with everything else. It was a perfect spread and setup. He had such good positioning. He even built random engineering bays just to block the enemy from advancing. And I love it. I absolutely love it. Just beautiful play from Oliveira, and he keeps himself alive in the series. All right, well, that game was kind of crazy. This man just leveled it up a notch. And I don't. I think I was talking so much about what Rainer needs to do because I feel like when the Terran kind of goes for that turtle setup, it's all about, you know, how the Zerg plays against it, I think is the bigger deciding factor. But really, the defensive setup was so well mixed and balanced for Oliveira. Even though, yes, he was heavy on tanks and relying on that, he had such a good spread of Widow Mines always peppered in, which just makes it so difficult because if the Zerg's ever not watching an area, those Widow Mines can be game ending. Uh, the Hellbats, I kept talking about because they just ruined the mass Ling attacks so badly. Every Hellbat just can kill like 50 Zerglings with the right Hellbat Bernie shots. Plus three and Blue Flame, such crucial upgrades. And um, yeah, the Ghosts as well, just running around, spreading with those Ghosts and always punishing. Every time Reyna turned to run away, bam, pop, 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 Ultras and Banelings getting sniped. Really fantastic play from Oliveira in that match and... One where, I, you know, I talked about some mistakes Reyna's made, but the, the reason is, is because Reyna's done some spectacular things to get himself ahead in this series. And I think a lot of people, they go, man, why are you talking about Reyna, Reyna, Reyna? But if you watch any of my casts of him versus Maru in the last few years, it's the same thing. Because Maru gets ahead into a winning or almost winning position versus Terran all the time. But he's not necessarily the best at finishing the game off once it hits a certain point. It feels like there's this, this drastic shift if Reyna doesn't win in the mid game to him going, oh God, they're just turtling. Ah, oh, how am I going to finish them off? And you know, he's, he's capable of doing some fantastic things there, but he gets a little bit stubborn. I mean, I love the Ling drops. They were so well done. 
but uh, there's two big things we talked about with the stubbornness. He doesn't transfer workers to forward bases. Even when he has control of them for four or five minutes, he often has two or three drones mining, if anything. And then only as his other bases mine out, does he move those workers forward. And he runs out of resources in the late game. And it happens every single time. And he, he just doesn't, he refuses to fix that problem. He also is very adamant about not enjoying infestors um, or broodlords. And yet, there is a very clear strategy use case for Broodlords that we see all the top pros do, especially when they have momentum, which he did, I believe, have in that late game scenario, which is one round of Broodlords, break the tank setup, create some areas in their setup. Because once you create a crack in the front line, my God, Reyna's style just goes ham. He gets in there with the Ling Bane and Oliveira did a really good job of scrambling around and handling it. But I don't think if even, even Maru would have been able to hold on if he lost the siege tanks in that position. Now, Oliver is being nice and annoying here. Just having a little scout around. Does have to get out. Babylon is the best map for Terran in this pool. And this has to make me question a little bit Oliver's map choices to leave this for the fifth and final map. Because Rainer picked Altitude and then he picked um, Dragon Scales, which is, I don't think, as good as this map. It's, it's not a bad map for Terran. I think it's pretty okay. But I think Babylon is actually the best map, in my opinion, for Terran versus Zerg. So I think a little bit of a mistake for him to let that go. Also, oh no, he's letting Rainer scout everything. Oh, Raider almost blocked the factory, but not, not, not quite. Good Zergen Scout. Oh, the Reaper went down during that as well. Oh no, this is not a great start. Rain is running circles around with him with the Zergling. Rain is not willing to go and let this, this full reversal in. Rain is like, no, 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 I can dance all day, but he gets a Reaper kill, gets a full scout of the 3cc. A very good start for Rainer in game number five. Oliveira does have the map advantage though. So we can see what he can piece together. Now, I think the reason is there's great tank spots. There's lots of rocks that you really need to tear down to allow this map to have a bit more freedom of movement. Until those rocks are down, the Terran has really nice uh, ledges and ridges and all these areas where they can set up those range units on. It looks like he's going to be going for Hellion Banshee again. Ow. Twitch chat's pointing out, actually, I mean, it's the best of... Obviously, there is a vetoed map. So, obviously, it's not the best map. That's a good point. What do we think uh, gets vetoed, then, by the Zerg players? If they don't veto Babylon, I guess they veto Ancient Cistern, because we haven't seen that in this series. So, that's interesting. Rainer not enjoying all the ledges and ridges on Ancient Cistern. That's, that's interesting. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Ancient Cistern has some really annoying architecture. So, I can see why Rainer actually vetoed that. Overlord does go down. Serral wasn't vetoing it. So Serral, I think, vetoes Babylon, I believe. Because he played Ancient Cistern versus Beyond. Or maybe Royal Blood. Royal Blood, I think, gets vetoed by the Terran? Rather than the Zerg, because it's a bit more wide open. Anyway, I'll stop musing on that and just cast the game. I'll uh, have to learn these things for my next casts to update everybody on what I learn. <laughs> Still learning things. Eight aliens into Cloak Banshee's a rather conservative follow-up to the third command center, but <clears throat> nothing too wild there. Rainer going for the Lair, the Baneling Nest. Nine queens, and does lose some tumors there, but should be quick to replenish those. He's got the third base full of workers, does Rainer. Expect him to go for Baneling Speed as soon as that Lair's finished. Now, where does Rainer take a fourth? Because this fourth base is a little vulnerable to, like, tanks pushing down here and just kind of... I guess they can push around this corner. This fourth base, though, has those rocks that I talked about, which is such a nightmare. I hate these rocks. They could also get tanks up around this area. If they get, like, an army wedged behind this mineral patch with a tank there, you, you really cannot clear it. The fourth base is the biggest conundrum for the Zerg on this map, and that's why Rain is shoving his creeps so far down in the south. He's going to try and get it well in front of this base to protect it. Now, if Oliveira could focus that base down, that would be very effective, and the queens have to come kind of far off creeps, so I think he could barely get it. A cancel on this fourth would be very effective. It'll force Rainer to be massing units off just 66 drones, as there's nowhere to send any new workers to. Oh, very good micro, and even gets the drone. That's going to be about a one-minute delay on that fourth base, which is very well done. Would have got 300 IQ points if he dipped in and actually got that uh, drone that was going to build it as well. And almost gets a queen, but not quite. I think these Banshees are not long for this world. I think they'll get cornered now. Rain is very good with his queen movement, so unlikely that both of these Banshees get out of here alive, but just going to grab a few more drones as he can. Actually scares back Rain's uh, queen. 
Wow, good micro. Six drones cancel on the fourth for that long. That's some good momentum for Oliveira. Five barracks coming up. He's got the double upgrades going as well, going into bio tank play. On this map, we did say tank positions could be fantastic here. And it is about a 50 second upgrade advantage. Baneling speed's been forgotten. Rainer forgot to make Baneling Speed, and the problem there is you're meant to go Baneling Speed before 1-1 one, one with this build, which means he thinks it's upgrading and doesn't realize it's not. Rainer needs to start that upgrade right now, or the first Marine tank push will be very scary. On the other hand, great creep spread for Rainer. He's doing a fantastic job with the creep spread. Fifth base going up in the north. Very good to have that. No macro hatch. This is not dark. We're watching dark would go double macro hatch here to prepare for future mistakes, not Rainer. Ooh, quite a few lings go down there. He's going to go Hydralisk play. Baneling speed does start up. Okay, he catches it now, but the marine tanks are already coming forward. There are two siege tanks out. He leaves two banshees and a tank at home. Oliveira actually playing very conservatively right now, seeing the, the creep this far forward. He sieges quite far back, and Reyna, without Baneling speed, is going to be in a bit of trouble. He goes for a ling run by the banshee. Stop it. Looks like he did maybe cancel a command center, but it instantly gets rebuilt. Only one Reaper and one Command Center cancel. That's all Oliveira's lost in this game. Still got all eight Hellbats alive, guarding the Siege tank. This is that yeah, one of these positions where it's like, okay, you can buy time, but you're probably going to have to give this base up. Why is Rainer still droning? Why is Rainer going to 90 drones? And he's running forward without Baneling speed. Crazy moves. Rainer needs to get out of there. Takes a few tank shots. Oh my lord. Uh, Rainer has been so greedy here. We always talk about Rainer's greed. I didn't think he'd be so greedy on such a small map, though. This seems like a wild choice. Baneling speed is still not there. He's bleeding into these Marines. Rainer really struggling with no Baneling speed here. Oh my lord, the Marines picking off Queens and Banelings like mad. It's literally just 16 Marines and two Medivacs with a Siege Tank behind it. Is he going to win the game with two Medivacs worth of Marines? This is absolutely ridiculous. That is crazy. He's doing so much damage. Obviously, it's not game over. But my god, he just got a crazy trade. Uh, Rainer really so upset about forgetting that Baneling speed. That's a big mistake. I think he has to just abandon this base. This is a losing trade down here. Uh, obviously, try to hang on to it for a little bit longer, but you definitely don't want to try to break this position because you're never going to be able to actually overwhelm the tank. Rainer chasing off creep. A big mistake for him here. Oliveira is just rallying to the front decisively. That tank is Chad mode. And look, now he feels he's got so much momentum, he can actually shove further forward to the next ridge line. He'll put that tank over on the left side for sure. These tanks could also siege on the right. This is a beautiful setup for Oliveira. He's got so much damage. Rainer over droning massively and forgetting Bailing speed. But it is Rainer. Rainer will not go down without a fight. Bailing are finishing morphing that front line of hell that's starting to get cleared out the hydra's doing okay here they do have the move speed upgrade they do not have the range just yet lings intercept the rally get a siege tank nice moves the banshee's getting f2 to the front was a big mistake rainer could have continued with the run by but he's going to bring those zerglings home and try to defeat this push banelings lings hydras if he can get rid of those siege tanks then he can shut this down and use that giant work account to stay alive remember that base is still up in the bottom rainer's going to go for it but the lings actually ended up going for a backstab he changed his mind but too many marines and tanks coming forth rainer's looking for that fight he needs another round or two of units out. Our Hydra rallies in and dies. He gets a good bailing hit on those Marines. Doesn't have a lot of Zerglings to capitalize though and these tanks have a good spready. He needs the Ling flank on the siege tanks to finish this army off. Those tanks have punished him. 9 kills, 13 kills and 17 kills. Olivera with the tactical retreat picks up and gets everything out of there. And Rainer has got to be so frustrated. He wanted to catch those siege tanks to make this worthwhile. Despite that, he holds onto his fifth base somehow. I do not know how Rainer survives in these situations. Uh, Serral would have stopped on 70 drones and Mastling Bane and been completely fine. Rainer's like, lol, I'll make almost 90 workers in the face of, of, of a game five deciding match. That is the difference between these sorts of zergs. Rainer plays fast and loose. And the thing is, he's so good mechanically. He's still droning. And he's been getting away with it, but his creep spread sucks. He lost a lot of queens. He lost so much creep on the south. He's starting to respread it there. He's got great creep in the middle. Uh, unfortunately, he did lose a tumor in the north by the looks of it. Uh, he's going to have to try and use these creep queen or injecting queens to respread. He needs creep on the south side pretty desperately, but Hive is now up, and it feels like Rain has made it past the scariest part of this game. Somehow, I, I, I really am just floored by how good Rainer is at StarCraft. He's such a nightmare to play against in this matchup. If you guys want to see what it feels like to be a pro facing him, go watch Big Gabe when he matches with him in the Weekly Cup. He always has this look of, oh god, not Rainer again. Siege tank sieging up on that ridge line. Can't really get around that ridge. Really good position for those tanks. Big counter attack here for Rainer. The two tanks are sieging. He could try to jump on that, but with the Marines behind the wall off and two tanks, Rainer says, oh, I'm not really sure if I can take that fight. Better back off these tanks. Getting some good volleys. Yeah, Rainer's going to move in and flank this army from the right side. Rainer should be able to clear this up, but he's mistimed his flank kind of. He comes in with some lings, gets one of the siege tanks, but he goes in, he goes out. Rainer panicking a little bit. Oh, the double lib! 
The double lib comes in and gets 12 workers. It means Reyna doesn't get to collapse on the army, and he loses a bunch of economy. Oliveira, crazy, ballsy, keeps pushing forwards with a tiny force here. He should lose this army now. Reyna should be able to break through, but at what cost? The Vipers come in a bit too late to drop any blinding clouds. You can tell Reyna's f 2 a little bit. The libs are now still doing even more damage. Oh no! Reyna is absolutely getting thrown off. Oliveira, sensing weakness and pouncing on it. I would not have continued pushing because I don't have Killer Instinct. Most Terrans don't. I don't think Bunny or anyone else would. I think a lot of them would have pulled back to lick their wounds, gather for a big push, but Oliveira sensed weakness. He knew those Liberators were catching Reyna off guard and he kept on shoving those tanks on the right side. He's got to blinding cloud those whenever he goes forth. Reyna giving up ground, but that means he's giving up way too much economy now because 3-3 three, three is about to kick in and Oliveira's Killer Instinct, that two Liberator choice. I didn't even see it coming across the map, neither did Reyna, and it threw a massive spanner in the works. Absolutely ridiculous. Lingbane Hydra goes for a bit of a backstab, but he's got too many units there. More commands in his building and floating out. 30 SCVs on this base right now, so Oliveira definitely needs a new expansion. Oh, Blinding Cloud comes in, but once again, too many tanks seized. He just can't get on top of this army. Reyna is getting shoved back, and there is a ghost transition, and now a double upgrade advantage kicking in for the Terran. The Terran is mining more resources the Terran has a larger army and has an upgrade advantage. This is a desperate situation for Reyna right now. I hope he's wearing his goddamn wizard robes because he needs to reach into those sleeves and pull a rabbit out of a hat. He needs to do some magic right now. Oliveira is marauding through the center of the map, not caring about the crease spread. He clears some of it, but he says, I don't need to clear all of it. I don't even care. The Vipers can't get in range of blinding clouding the tanks, so they're relying on parasitic bombs. Hydra's Banelings, Zerglings trying to buy time. Rainer trying to make more Banelings, trying to make plus three carapace. You can see here, he's got those Vipers dancing around that left side. He's got this Ling Bane Hydra on the bottom. A Liberator there going to come in once again. He's loving these Liberators. Such a good way to apply pressure. We saw in the earlier stages of the tournament, Spirit using that a lot to tilt out his opponents. Oh no, Rainer's not reacting! Rainer not reacting as Hydra's just north of that, but he's, he's just so thrown off his game right now. The pressure that Oliveira is bringing is causing mistakes. Oliveira, I don't know how he stayed so cool, calm, and collected in that previous game while defending 400 waves of Zerg and didn't panic F2 once. Yet now here in this next game, he's also showing surprising calm in the biggest moment of his career. If he can reversal Reyna, this is something very few players have ever done in this match. I actually don't know if Reyna's ever lost a series after going up 2-0 at the start of it against a Terran player. Uh, if Oliveira could do this as a massive underdog and get top four in the world championship, it would be a career-changing result for him as he has never even made it out of the groups here at Katowice. Ling run by goes in for Reyna, but a new rally comes out and shuts it down. On the front, Oliveira branching into two bases at once, continuing to bait Reyna into those siege tanks. Reyna's going to lose his third or fourth base up there on the north side. The tanks just stretch for days. And even though he's got some creep and some vision, does Reyna. This is Reyna's vision. You can see it's panic vision. The minimap is covered in these red exclamation marks popping up. Attack warning, attack warning, attack warning. At that point, it becomes hard to really collect any cool, calm, collected information from the minimap because it's all just constant alerts. We're under attack, we're under attack, we're under attack. Vipers coming forward. He does get a blinding cloud in them duck, but then the EMP and the snipes land. The Vipers are gone, and there's still five more tank siege behind it. The Banelings are pretty much exhausted. The Hydras have to pull back, trying to go for a desperation. Lurker Den is Reyna right now, but he is down. 70 supply and Oliveira just constantly consistently methodically working his way forwards he's letting his hands do the work he's not overthinking it and he's just starting to maraud into Reyna's territory this will be the biggest upset of the tournament if he can take down Reyna Reyna has not lost a series to this point only dropping a few single maps to Protoss players in the group stage and yet he is looking like he's gonna get reversal 10 lurkers are morphing but there's so many tanks. Tanks and ghosts counter lurkers already. Marines in the south side do get cleaned up. Parasitic bomb comes down. Those Marines doing a nice little spready there, making it hard for him to move forwards. And I feel like with these tanks in between the bases, Rainer is going to go for one last ditch lurker shove. And then we're going to have to see him tap out from there. The Viper, the last Viper went down to those Marines. Snipes coming forward. He doesn't even get to shove. He doesn't even get to shove because Oliveira brings the fight to him. The Lurkers are just going to get overwhelmed by Bio Ghost Spreadies. And Oliveira showing that he is made of stiffer metal than we ever gave him credit. An immaculate victory. An amazing reversal. And I cannot believe that he came down back from down 0-2. This truly was one of the greatest victories. And I think the greatest victory in the career-defining series, which a lot of players forget the quarterfinals matches 
But this is such a ridiculous win for Oliveira. GG, well played.